welcome back to another episode of Deconstructing the Narrative. I am your host, and I'm also a content creator with uh, Sada Collective. My name is Erica Seha, and today I'm here with Tamira. How are you, Tamira? Hi, everyone. I'm well. <laughs> awesome. Um, so just to begin, we kind of always just start by asking the artists, um, kind of giving us a background about what you do and just kind of letting us in on your creative craft. Okay. Well, my name is Tamira. Um, I'm the owner of a 90s inspired streetwear brand called New Heritage. Um, I relaunched New Heritage um, to pay homage to my late aunt and uncle who were the original founders of the brand. Um, oh, that's awesome. Back, thank you. So I'm here in Los Angeles, California, and um, I'm originally from Baltimore, Maryland, but I moved here. Um, my 11 year anniversary <laughs> is coming up um, next month. So, oh, awesome. Yeah. Awesome. And kind of tapping in, like, can we get a little bit of more of the story about how your aunt and uncle kind of started the business and kind of what you've taken over and just more of a background of the company? Sure. So um, my aunt and uncle, my my aunt, she um, she's from Baltimore. She was she was from Baltimore and she attended mm -hmm. FIT. And my uncle, he he was from Baltimore as well. And they were childhood sweethearts. And um, they created the brand new heritage. My uncle, he attended Parsons in New York. Oh, so did I. That's awesome. Together. <laughs> yeah, together. So they went, they were in fashion school. And um, my uncle, he was a graphic designer. Mm -hmm. And um, he actually created the original graphics. Like if you see on the sweatshirts, um, he created all those graphics. And back in the 90s, like that's where fashion, music, art was like really big. And mm -hmm. um, so they ran around with like the top of the top, like fashion people, like um, Michael Kors was my aunt um, best friend. I have oh, pictures, awesome. <laughs> I wow. have pictures and um, like just, I was young at the time and didn't really understand. So I had to put two, you know, two things together and was like, oh, so they were like legit someone. Yeah. Like, so, um, my aunt, like, her wedding gown was Isaac Mizrahi and oh, wow. um, like they were they were friends as well and then like the big one um, her wedding shoes were Manolo Blahnik and I remember being little and going into her closet and just seeing white white boxes of shoes just lined up everywhere with okay. black writing is Manolo Blahnik but it took me a long time to like really understand like who is Manola Blahnik? I mean, she mm -hmm. would tell me like, she'd be on the phone and like talking business and everything. She'd be like, quiet down everyone. Like, I need you to be quiet. Like I'm on a very, very important phone call with my friends. And later on, like I found out like her friends were designers. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what the heck, that's insane. So, that's yeah. awesome. That's awesome. So, and so, um, did you so I relaunched, I relaunched New Heritage to pay mm -hmm. homage to like what they started and to eventually like be able to reach out to these people. And once I get like a, I wanna get like a stable enough ground, like mm -hmm. before I reach out to them, like I wanna reach out mm -hmm. to them with something already. Right, right. Yeah. So, and so what is your like plan kind of like, do you have like a like little bit of like a, um, I guess like a goal um, set in mind before you kind of start digging yourself back into that, that um, um, area? So like right now, like I'm, I'm starting, like I started with like t-shirts and hoodies and just getting like a name for the brand and letting people like be able to recognize it. That's why I started with like t-shirts and hoodies, but eventually like I want to venture off into like more of a fashion brand. That's like, amazing. Instead of streetwear. Yeah. That's awesome. That's so cool. Wow. And um, so what is your background? What like what have you done um, prior to doing this? Do you have any artistic or creative background prior to yes. like, taking over this? Yes. So um, like I was saying, um, I grew, I was raised in Baltimore, Maryland, mm -hmm. and um, I went to fashion school. I actually I went to um, I went to a what do you call it? Uh, um, I have my associates. So okay. I went to um, more of a community college in Baltimore, mm -hmm. um, but I've always been into fashion. I did like um, fashion shows. I was a model before I did dance. Like my aunt, when she was living, she actually got me into like dance and ballet. And so like 
all along, like I knew like fashion was like for me. And then mm. um, my grandmother, which is my aunt's mom, she used to take me to, um, she used to create like um, robes for the priests like oh wow every, like Sunday so oh my gosh <laughs> watching her um watching her sew and um just like putting like little like details and things like it actually like I grew like to like those things mm -hmm. so fashion has always been like a part of you know a part of me so, that's awesome and it's just kind of been carried down it looks like that's amazing yeah awesome. and then when I moved here I, um, I moved here 11 years ago and I started uh, doing assisting styling work. Mm -hmm. um, I worked with several celebrities and also um, I was working for uh, Diesel Black Gold on Melrose mm -hmm. Place. So there I got like my foot in the door to like help like a lot of like celebrities and was able to go to New York Fashion Week with Diesel. Oh, that's amazing. And, um, I was able to meet Renzo, um, which is the owner of Diesel and mm -hmm. just... Um, Converse with them about like different sales and things that are working in the store. So just having my brand now, it all, you know, it makes sense. <laughs> yeah, that's amazing. Wow, that's so cool. Yeah. Such a cool background. <laughs> Thank you. That's awesome. Yeah. Um, and so um in terms of like um like a narrative behind everything that you're doing, I kind of want to chat with you um regarding like what you feel is like the most important story that you're trying to tell with your with your line and with your work. Okay. So, um, like I said, like I'm in, I'm into fashion and it, it's been mm -hmm. a part of my, you know, family history, um, mm -hmm. as far as like, even to like my, my great grandmother who was also a seamstress and my grandmother mm -hmm. was a seamstress. Mm -hmm. So it, it's just, it just makes sense. Like it's, it's just yeah. ingrained in me for some reason, as mm. much as I try to like run away from it and like mm. try to figure out, okay, I don't, you know, I don't want to do this anymore. Even in high school, like, um, I went to school, I was doing medical, medical work and oh wow, like, they wanted me to like dissect a rabbit and I ran mm. out of class. So I was just like, this isn't for me. <laughs> like, <no. laughs> so like, um, I just think like heritage, like just like knowing your heritage and where you come from. Oh, that's, awesome. um, that's why this brand is like very, very important because like it just has like a strong history um, mm -hmm. behind it. Like my aunt and uncle, they were able to, I don't know how, but like as a child watching um, New Heritage on different television shows, like Will Smith wore New Heritage on Fresh, Fresh Prince of Bel Air. Oh my it was gosh! Really like a different world and living color, like so. It just it's like I have to do this. Like it's a part yeah. of me. <laughs> That's amazing. Yeah. Awesome. And um, what, can you like share any like cool stories that you like heard from your aunt and uncle like back in the day? Do you have any cool like moments or anything that you can share with us? Um, so we've had a lot of experiences. It's amazing. So the crazy thing is like. I like there was a mall across the street from where I live mm -hmm. which is it's Mondawmin Mall which is in Baltimore mm -hmm. and my aunt and uncle they actually got a store in mm -hmm. Mondawmin Mall so I was able to just go across the street and just spend time with them in the store but since I was so young at the time they would just tell me like go in the back but in the back mm -hmm. they had sewing machines and screen printing and machines and like just everything and it was just like but they also had a space for me and my sister where we could like play with puzzles and mm -hmm. play with barbie dolls and you know things like that so that like really like just the that idea for a child to experience mm -hmm. was just pretty cool yeah that's amazing yeah. and i'm sure you have a lot of really great memories from that and then it's so cool that you kind of have had this like it's been something that's been in the family for so long so yes. um yeah that's amazing that's so cool um and so uh you know in the now is there any like uh real life experiences that you've personally had just from growing up or even um, recently just given the times um that have really inspired the the like way that you want to take the brand going forward as you're kind of controlling it now well, like what's going on as far as like, um, 
the world it's interesting how like some of the images that my uncle created they're still mm -hmm. um they still work for now like mm -hmm. you know like one of the images like i'm wearing one of the t-shirts i don't think you can mm -hmm. see it but it says um it's black man on it and mm -hmm. like my uncle the time that he created this image was during like the rodney king like oh wow king here uh -huh. so like my uncle's images like all of the like all of his images have a date so mm -hmm. what i've been doing is like researching that date and i find like that certain things were going happening during these dates mm -hmm. and it just goes with what's going on now and it's yeah, kind of like, like an exact repeat that's crazy it's crazy like even yeah. with like the basketball shirts i don't know if you see them behind me but mm -hmm. Um, the basketball shirt, like that was created during the time of like, um, they, they did like the black, like, like the, the draft, like mm -hmm. it was like black, um, black men and drafting, like, mm -hmm. so it was like during the time of like Michael Jordan and like Bugs, Bugsy Bo, like mm -hmm. different basketball players. And like, to see like what's happening now is just. It's just interesting. It's very yeah, very, yeah, yeah, and it's just showing the way that like things repeat and yeah, wow, that's even so crazy. Um, one of my accomplishments. Like, um, it was worn on the movie Boomerang, oh, and wow. actually, the series for Be Boomerang came out a year mm -hmm. ago on mm -hmm. um, BT, and I was mm -hmm. able to like you know give them shirts to put on the show. So mm -hmm. it was awesome. just interesting t to be able to like. And now Fresh Prince of Bel Air is coming back. So it's yeah. like, <laughs> you're like, come like on, main thing. Like, I'm just trying yeah. to like get in contact with Will Smith. Like, I'm really yeah. trying to like so. That's so awesome. Put it into existence. Yeah. That'd be so amazing. And I'm sure since you've kind of had that experience before, that would be something you'd be totally down for. And especially with all the history, I feel like just explaining this uh, your story to anybody is just like so awesome to hear you're just carrying on this tradition that's just been there and so um I feel like getting it involved yes. in anything that has already previously been previously been involved in is going to be super easy and awesome that's yeah. so cool um and um so ever since you've taken over have you had any like seriously like pivotal responses like has anybody just come up to you and said something that was just like really like moving and changing for you or has anybody like noticed the brand since then and been like oh my gosh like I remember this yes. from back in the day? um I've actually had um older <laughs> like the mm -hmm. older crowd reach out to mm -hmm. me because like one of their kids walked in with the shirt and they're like mm -hmm. where did you get this shirt from and they're like like my friend she you know she has the brand and then they will go into the store and they're like oh my goodness I remember wearing that brand back in the 90s like yeah <laughs> so amazing I have to get some some merch and it's just like this is That's what so I wanted cool. like this is perfect um I even ran into a guy um like a year ago I was at a museum opening and I was like I was in line at the taco truck getting ready to get tacos or whatever and something was just like turn around so I turned mm -hmm. around and the guy had on the original New Heritage shirt oh my gosh like, <laughs> oh my god that's so <laughs> crazy I have to walk up to this man so I walked up to him and I was like, excuse me, sir, I don't mean to be like just crazy or anything, but I just want to let you know, like, um, I, I'm the owner of the shirt that you're wearing. Like my aunt and uncle, they had the brand back in the nineties and I relaunched it to pay homage to them. And he was like, oh my goodness, I love New Heritage. And he was just like, I love New Heritage so much. And my friend, he also loved it too. And he was just like, this is this is gonna freak you out and I was just like what and he's just like he actually has a tattoo of one of the images on his forearm oh my gosh like, <laughs> oh my god that's amazing. So he took his shirt off and like literally it was like the warrior on his forearm oh my god that's so, so cool it's How definitely crazy. like sometimes I'm just like you know they say your angels you know help you through and it's just mm -hmm. like I feel that like sometimes I feel like they're actually guiding me places to where I need to go and, you know, mm -hmm. connecting with people. So. Yeah. That's amazing. Wow. That's so cool. Like what the <laughs> heck? <laughs> like the way, like the world feels so small when things like that happen. It's just like, it like oh is. my gosh, like you just the right place, right time. Like, it and it happened again happen. too. Like it happened again, but I was in DC 
That's and so I cool. was at like a, a festival and uh-huh. the guy was walking towards me and he had on the shirt too. And I was just like, what is this? Crazy. Yeah, like what is going on? Oh my God. And I'm sure they were so excited to hear that the brand is relaunching and kind of taking a different direction. And yes. um, that's so cool. Wow. Awesome. Um, and I kind of want to tap in a little bit deeper into like your specific creative process and um, kind of what like a day in the life looks like for you as you're kind of getting this brand up and running. Okay. So like right now, at first, like I left um, Diesel Black Gold Mm -hmm. three years ago. So when I left Diesel Black Gold, I had in my mind that, okay, this brand is going to run so smoothly. Mm -hmm. I'm going to be able to launch this, this collection this month, this collection this month. It did not happen that way. Yeah. (laughs) Um, So I actually like, I had to figure out ways to just like to continue the momentum like I um I start I I was like well I set up a booth at the Fairfax Flea Market Mm -hmm. and with that like that was like my first like Mm pop-up so doing that like um it generated a lot of sales and I was just able to like continue to like you know do the Fairfax Flea Market for a couple months until Mm -hmm. they say you had to put your name into a lottery and if you don't get picked in a the lottery, then you don't, be, you can't sell. So mm-hmm. there were several Sundays that I wasn't able to sell. And it was just like, okay, rent is due. What do yeah. I do? Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, so I had to find like other, um, other pop-ups and like mm-hmm. other people that could like, you know, help me, you know, to push the brand. Um mm-hmm. And it got so bad, whereas though I had to like, you know, I was on unemployment. Mm-hmm. I was like, I had to get food stamps, which I mm-hmm. never ever would ever think that this would happen. Mm-hmm. But I was close to like losing everything. Mm-hmm. And I I had to like really have a talk with myself and just, you know, say like, okay, like just you gotta get a job. So Mm -hmm. basically I'm now I'm working, um, I'm working nine to five, um, Mm -hmm. but due to COVID, they reduced those hours to Mm -hmm. nine to three. Mm -hmm. So I work during the day and then I come home at night and I'm just constantly like figuring out like ways to like push the brand, talk to, um, talk to people, send out emails. And I also mm-hmm. have um, my own press machine. So I started like creating my own shirts instead That's of awesome. like, depending on other, you know, mm-hmm. other mm-hmm. things. So it's just you right now? Or are you just working like solo right now? For yeah, the it's just me, just solo. Yeah. That's but so um, awesome. I have nieces. So mm-hmm. they're constantly asking me questions. And um, one of my nieces, she's she wants to, you know, take over the brand she keeps telling oh, me that. so cool it's just keeping oh. it going that's amazing <laughs> I'm like oh my goodness okay <laughs> oh, that's so cool <laughs> yeah so that's awesome um, yeah it's just me awesome. cool and uh speaking of COVID how have you kind of noticed that it's impacted the way that you're working with the brand um during this time and you know as opposed to prior because I you know I've been chatting a lot with all my artists kind of about this I just want to yes. kind of get a gauge of how creatives are navigating through this time right now yeah, so in the beginning of COVID, it was very, very hard for me to fill orders, which mm-hmm. it actually, um, it wasn't good for the brand because like I had to, you know, write apologies, like due to COVID, your items won't get to you until mm-hmm. two to three, you know, two to three weeks, but it wound up being a whole month mm-hmm. because one of the um, one of the vendors that I was working with they closed and they didn't Mm -hmm. tell me. And it was just like, I'm sending emails, like, where's my stuff? And they're just like, not responding. And then they finally respond. They finally responded like two months later. Mm -hmm. And it was just, it was a disaster. So I had to like figure out, like, just, you know, pivot basically like I feel as though like the whole insp- the whole experience like I've just been pivoting just trying to mm-hmm. figure out okay if I can't get that done like how can I do this like mm-hmm. you know so um, totally but now things are you know starting to you know open up again mm-hmm. so we're um, looking we're looking ahead kind of <laughs> they open. <laughs> so what I'm doing I'm getting ready for like the fall winter so um I, I'm like creating hoodies 
that like I can keep in house. Um, mm -hmm. So, you know, if I need to ship, I can just, you know, ship from, you know, from right, home. right, right. Just kind of planning ahead just in case. <laughs> yeah. Smart. Yeah. Awesome. Um, and, um, you know, just in general, what do you feel um, as an artist? Because, you know, what you're doing really is truly really an art form. And we, I kind of want to discuss with you um, what role you feel that artists play, like, in society today. Because I feel like, you know, artists are so pivotal and so, like, just needed. And, and they're used in every single category of any single, like, area in life. You know, you walk down the street and you see art everywhere. You'll hear art, which is music. You know what I mean? Like, um, they're just you know, we've just really penetrated every single other area. So I kind of wanted to talk with you about what you feel that um, the role that an artist plays in today's society, especially with everything that's going on. Um, it's, we play a really, really big role. Um, like one of the things that I'm like having a hard time with, like with the Zoom thing and like mm -hmm. meeting people virtually, it's very, very hard for me because I'm more of an introvert until like, and I like to, I like to dance on the dance floor. So a mm -hmm. lot of my connections have been through people meeting me while I'm out. Like okay. they see that I'm wearing my shirt and they're like, oh mm -hmm. my goodness, where did you get that from, you know, tell me mm -hmm. more. And it's just mm -hmm. like, now everything's virtually. So you can't even see yeah. what I'm wearing. Mm -hmm. So it's driving me insane. Um, so it's like I'm trying to like join like different groups and things like that. So I think like, and I'm not able to go to like museums, which is yeah. like freaking me out. So it's like the inspiration is like, I constantly have to like figure out other ways to like feed it. So I've been doing like Pinterest boards and um, just talking to other other like creatives like mm -hmm. through virtual which is mm -hmm. very very hard it's very difficult yeah especially because i feel like we all rely so much on that face-to-face -face interaction and being able to actually communicate with someone about like your pieces of work and like you said also especially with clothing like you need to see what someone's wearing in order to kind of like get a gauge of what it is you know what i mean so it's it's difficult it's very difficult and i think um you know we are great like lucky very lucky to have access to all of these amazing technology um technological sources but at the same time it's just like it's still not it's still it's never gonna be the same and mm -hmm. and I think like as an artist like you know a lot of artists like we go we travel so mm -hmm. we travel or we try to find inspiration mm -hmm. somewhere instead of you know I mean some people can stay in the house like I'm mm -hmm. not a person that can you know I don't I hate the house yeah same so it's, <laughs> the same way <laughs> cabin been, fever all day yeah. it's been so hard um so I think like us artists like we play such an important role because we people actually can trend forecast through us like mm -hmm. so it's like not seeing people not seeing you know your original like crew of like artists people it's just like it's a debbie down <laughs> like yeah <laughs> well here's to looking forward that everything's gonna pick up soon um it's, i don't think it's ever gonna be exactly how it was but i think we're gonna learn to just re regroup and just refocus and hopefully i know that our community is gonna kind of come back together and yeah it's been hard too because like especially for sada we've wanted to do a lot of like um events where we have like creatives kind of all come into one space and um you know we wanted to do like even like some where you're we showing art and like doing some sort of gallery um but it's just difficult it's just it's like impossible right now so yeah so, i so lost i found like a lot of platforms though um that are like you're able to like show you know your work like i did like a virtual pop-up which was very interesting. Like they had it set up, like it was tables. And so people can actually come into like, and sit, like come to your table, but it's virtual. Yeah, awesome. like, so mm -hmm. you're able to show them, you know, mm -hmm. what you sell, but I don't think it's the same. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Same. Yeah. You got to see it and feel it. And just like, you know, all yeah. those are so important. So that's so, but that's really cool that they even have those resources available, you know, we're just making do with what we got. So <laughs> that's good that you found, you know, what you can and kind of gone with it. And that's really awesome. Um, I wanted to kind of talk with you about, um, you know, 
like the theme that you see for the brand going forward? Like, are you planning on sticking solely with your uncle's, you know, graphics? I know you mentioned that, you know, a lot of the stuff is that, or are you planning on kind of incorporating your own style into it eventually as well? And what was, what is that going to look like? Okay. So eventually, like I, like I said, I want to create more of, cause right now it's a streetwear brand. It's right. like t-shirts and hoodies, mm-hmm. but eventually like I want to create it like a brand, like a right. Know, Fashion. so what's that gonna look like more exclusive like, <laughs> so more, Sorry, <laughs> uh, more more exclusive um more of like the silhouettes being art mm-hmm. so mm-hmm. like maybe like a carving of the actual shape of the head into mm-hmm. like a, a jacket awesome. or something like mm-hmm. um i'm into i'm into like a lot of like um what do you call it? Uh, why am I going brain fart? Um, uh, like motif style. Okay. Like okay. Type, you know, art. So uh-huh. I want to, you know, take it into more of an art form. And mm-hmm. um, I also want to collab with different artists too, to mm-hmm. be able to still keep the, keep the image of the brand, but mm-hmm. make it more, um, more, art I guess Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and do you have any like sources of inspiration like designers that you're really inspired by that you're kind of like oh I I created I'll show you what I created I created like like this Mm -hmm. oh that's awesome yeah Yeah, so eventually like I want to like make like um bookshelf holders oh awesome like uh like a clock Uh so we have like the like the little nose and then it would tick around or something like uh-huh. that like yeah um or um also want to do um what do you call it? like different wall like walls like um mm-hmm. help me <laughs> um like like exhibition graffiti, like, places oh graffiti or, or like like graffiti um, art my gosh, I'm totally blanking on the word too. What's it called? Like a mural. <laughs> yes, <laughs> like a mural. Yeah. That's it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, and um, I'm also inspired by Jeff Koons. Like he's like okay. one of my favorite artists. So like I see like New Heritage as a big medium to mm-hmm. be able to, you know, pay homage to, you know, what they started. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's awesome. Perfect. And mm-hmm. then um, I kind of want to chat with you and see, you know, just based off of the time, because I know you kind of mentioned that you've kind of had a lot of ups and downs when it's come to the brand. So um, just kind of any so far that you've um, experienced within the creative industry, if you have any advice that you could lend to any younger artists who are kind of starting out and just entering into this world and um, kind of what you have kind of gathered from with what you've gathered from the creative industry right. you can lend some advice to them. Um. I say like, no matter what, just like continue to keep going, like as bad as it gets, like as hard as it gets, like you could have one piece of bread in the refrigerator, but just know like things are going to like change for the better and um, it's gonna work out like regardless, as much as cliche it sounds like that's, I think that's what it is like, yeah just keep going like Mm -hmm. I listen to like a lot of music and um a lot of like you know um a lot of artists as well that were like you know stuck into my position and like it's like consistency like as long as you like keep the consistency and just keep going and you know network as much as possible and like Mm -hmm. really like get out there like and just you know because for so long I was a shy kid so Mm -hmm. it was like to express myself the way I express myself is the way I dress and Mm -hmm. like during this time it's just like okay dressing is not going to work like you got to open your mouth and Mm -hmm. so it's like open your mouth and ask for help it's Mm -hmm. like which has been hard for me because I like to just do things on my own, but I know like in order to take the brand to where I need to take it, like I need to ask for help. Yeah, hundred percent. I think that's so important. And I think just being able to, to kind of have that communication open with other people um, is really necessary because I'm also very independent and I'm also someone who is just very like, I want to do it all by myself and I'd rather just not have the interaction sometimes, but sometimes it's like, 
it's the best, you know, and I was speaking to someone else and they kind of mentioned how they've noticed that when artists come together and collaborate, that you're kind of getting to like really amazing minds making one situation happen, you know? So not only are you getting your ideas, you're getting, you know, bouncing ideas off someone else. And usually what comes out is 10 times better than what one or the other could have done alone, you know? So I think, you know, that- trying to do, Like mm-hmm. trying to find that, um, that click of people that are artists like me that understand. Cause sometimes your family and your friends, they really don't get it because mm-hmm. it's like, they're like, oh, you're just stuck in your own world. And it's just like, no, my world is like, it's amazing. And it's just like the ideas I have when they actually come to fruition, like someone else does it. It's just like, oh my goodness, I thought about that. Like, yeah, I <laughs> have the, you know, the group to like yeah. really like help me with that. So mm-hmm. I think it's very, very important to also mm-hmm. surround yourself with people that can you know take you to those heights and like Mm -hmm. that you can really collab collab with Mm -hmm. and kind of tagging off of the networking aspect um what are some ways that you've kind of been um reaching out to network um just in general like what are some easier ways that you found to go and network is it just going to galleries or um well at first like I would go to like galleries I would go to um different like meet and greets um Mm -hmm there would be like industry parties as well Mm -hmm. and um just you know meet people there and Mm -hmm. because you know at like at meeting greets you're forced to like really say like okay my name is Tamir I'm the owner of (laughs) yeah so you have to say that um but now like during these times I've just been like doing like a lot of Facebook groups um just reaching out to people that I admire on LinkedIn Mm -hmm. and um, also like using the um, Instagram tags and Mm -hmm. like reaching out to people who like who are really dope like I just Mm -hmm. love like you know dope people Mm -hmm. that's awesome yeah I think it's really good advice I think the networking thing can be really um, scary for people who are entering so that's why I kind of just wanted to get a little bit of an insight into kind of what you're doing um and I think it's really cool that you've kind of found a way to kind of surround yourself with other creatives and kind of get more advice and just speak with people because I think you know that's the biggest part in this industry is just it's all about who you know really and if you're not someone who's great at you know having those interactions it can be really difficult so <laughs> yeah that's awesome sure. perfect and then just last but not least uh, just for fun we kind of been asking everybody what's your favorite song right now <laughs> I'm thinking about making a playlist with all of them, <laughs> eventually <laughs> my favorite song right now um I have like a lot of artists that I'm listening to right now um Name them out. that's so totally my fun. favorite I've been listening to um Masego a lot of Masego so today 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 <laughs> how do you how do you ever got today today I think that's the name of the song and um Summer Walker and um yeah like awesome <laughs> yeah <laughs> I'm like totally envisioning that like when I'm done with all of these interviews I just want to make like a huge playlist and like send it out that'd be so dope <laughs> oh that's gonna be so dope are you gonna right? put the playlist so yeah. cool. <laughs> I think that'd be so cool to send it out to all of you here you go <laughs> that's gonna be fun be so cool yeah awesome well perfect thank you so much it's been so fun talking with you and I think um You've been um, really interesting to talk to because this is the first time I've kind of spoke with someone who kind of has this brand that's kind of being reignited and you kind of have like this whole history behind it, which I think is so dope. And I think, um, you. you know, eventually people are definitely going to catch on and like realize, oh my God, like that's this, you know what I mean? And I think it's going to carry you forward. So. Like I told you so, I told you three years ago. But... Yeah, <laughs> it's going to be amazing. It's so cool. I love that. It was so fun to hear about and just hear all the history behind it. So um, super you. dope so thank you so much for joining us and um, is there you. any contact information you can give to everybody just in case they have any questions or anything sure um you can contact me at of course my brand the new heritage brand on instagram and um my website is newheritagebrand.com and uh, my personal is can you say at can you say purple is c-a-n the letter u s-a-y purple I love the color purple so awesome <laughs> on my personal you'll find like more of like my style and like I you know put things that inspire me like um fashion things that's awesome cool awesome so everybody go check her out 
And if you're watching and you're creative or if you have any creative friends who you think would be great for this series, please send them my way. Um, You can have them go on Instagram and in our um, link in the bio, we have um, a link to the application where they can submit an application and we'll go over and through them and kind of get in touch with you guys that way. Or you can also just send me a personal email at erica at sadacollective.com. Also, if you text a black heart emoji to um, eight, I'm sorry, 310-388-9808, you'll get text updates every single time a new episode goes live. And that's every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at 10 a.m. So thank you so much again, Tamira. And thank you, everybody, for thank watching. Thank you. And I really thank look forward so to sharing much, this with everybody. Thank so you. nice talking to see you. you.